This is my note for perspective. We're going to be talking with some Girl Scouts about being a helping hand with a food bank. And our post is miracle in art, but more importantly, we have a bunch of miracle people who are involved in art. And then we have an apprentice expo that you're going to want to hear about because you're going to want to participate right here on Norfolk Perspectives. Welcome to Norfolk Perspectives. I'm Bob Batcher and the Girl Scouts are here, which means, wait a minute. Where are the Girl Scout cookies? Kaylin Smith, PR manager for the Girl Scouts of Colonial Coast. That's your question. Where are the Girl, Girl Scout cookies? Did you sell them all? Well, we did sell a lot of cookies. We had a really successful program this year, yes. Super. Now, am I supposed to really be thinking about cookies and Girl Scouts? That's not everything a Girl No, Scouts it's definitely about, right? not everything we do. A lot of what we do is community service, and that's even what girls use their cookie money for, too. Oh, really? So it's kind of a full cycle? Yes. Mm -hmm. So you're out there selling food, so now you can start collecting food, right? And that's why Georgie Sawyer, who is a Girl Scout cadet, how you doing? I can tell Hi. that because of the... Oh, yeah, the color Okay, you know what's on that thing, because i got to ask you what's to describe them, because you're flying? Oh, um, bridging from my previous um, level in Girl Scouts, badges that I've earned, stars for how many years I've been in Girl Scouts, so... So how many years? Eight years. This is my eighth year. No, wait a minute. You can't join Girl Scouts when you're four, can you? Um, you can join when you're five, and so I'll be 13 this year, so I've been in since the very beginning. Really? Cool. I'm going to ask Abby Weber. How you doing? Good. Hi. Now, were you a Girl Scout? I was. I was. I was, too. <laughs> I was a brownie. I had an older sister, okay? That, that explains. That, let's get that, make that very clear. My sister was the Girl Scout. I never made it there, but I was a mascot. So you were a Girl Scout here locally, or? No, I'm actually originally from Pennsylvania, but um, I was a Girl Scout there. So, because that leadership foundation is really kind of what Girl Scouts are all about. Absolutely, and giving giving girls the opportunity to develop the self confidence and the leadership that lasts them a whole lifetime. And you're taking that leadership and self confidence to the food bank. Absolutely. Because you are the. Uh, uh, community engagement manager. Correct. Yeah. So okay, so you got a phone call saying we got a bunch of Girl Scouts who are gonna give you some food? Well, we've worked with the Girl Scouts for years on different projects, but this year um, we're really excited that they're doing a big, huge community wide food drive for us this May. All right. So Kaylin, what's that mean? Well, May 4th um, okay. is the official date for the Helping Hands food drive. And from nine to twelve, um, we're gonna be collecting food at all local Walmarts. So there'll be Girl Scouts there to collect the food, sort it, and load it onto the food bank trucks. And girls like Georgie are working ahead of time to collect food going door to door, holding drives at their schools and churches, and then bringing it on May 4th. But we're also encouraging the public to stop by any Walmart on May 4th. And now wait a minute, did it, did it dawn on you that one of the things Walmart sells is food? Abs yeah. that's that works. Is that the us. genius yeah. behind this? <laughs> yes. So um, you can go in. Put extra cans in your cart um, when you check out and then bring them out to us and we'll sort them and load them up and send them off to the food bank. Okay, so I can understand why you want that engagement, but why don't we tell the view? I mean, why is this an important program for, your, for the food bank? It's incredibly important, particularly this time of year. Um, during the spring and summer, food donations are severely low. So after the holidays, people sort of forget that we're there, but we're mm -hmm. still serving just as many people, and the need is great. And actually headed into the summer with the kids out of school, the need's even higher because families that are already struggling then have the kids at home um, to also feed. They can't rely on those free and reduced lunches and breakfasts that they normally have at school. So really the need is so great this time of year, so that's why this drive is so important to us. Let's talk a little bit about who's using the food bank now, because sure. that's also broadened on you. Absolutely, yeah. It's not, you know, people have a perception that it might just be someone that's homeless um, or without a job, but we see a lot of, you know, working families that are coming to us, seniors um, that, that don't really want to ask for help, but we know that they're out there. Children, um, you know, like I said, with the kids out of school, they're going to need our help this summer. Okay, I gotta ask you, this is, I'm gonna throw you a curve because we haven't even talked about this, but my curiosity is getting to me. I go home by way of Tidewater Drive. What's going on at the building? Oh, yeah, we're under come construction. On. I know. I, we were, I, you're looking at me, but I, we're, come I, on. <laughs> we're getting a face. This is a personal question. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're actually under construction. Um, our, our whole lobby and the whole facade of our building is, is being redone. We had a lot of old wood and, and we're trying to increase our energy efficiency. So, 
we're, we're getting a facelift. But you're still open. <laughs> we're still open. And you can still drop stuff off. We're still open. We're still open for food donations, volunteers, all of that. And so the afternoon of May 4th, you'll still be able to receive those big trucks coming in. Absolutely. We'll be organizing all those logistics that day, yes. Okay, Georgie, how are you going to get all this food into, into Walmart besides going in there and buying it? Well, my troop, we're going, like, we're each going to our own neighborhood and collecting food, and then we'll take them in our cars to Walmart and drop them off to the trucks for the food banks. So. Okay, now what are you going to do if somebody brings some frozen Thin Mints to you? Because that's where they're <laughs> at right about now. <laughs> well, they work at the food bank, don't they? Frozen items? Yeah, frozen. Yeah, They'd be thawed we, by the time they got yeah, there. Yeah, we, we really are encouraging non-perishable items for this dr food drive. <laughs> um, we do use frozen products at the food bank, but for a food drive like this, it's probably not the best okay. option. So you're going after canned, canned food and things like that? Yes, non-perishable non food items for this. Okay, let me ask you, okay, let's talk a little bit about the, 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 the engagement that the girls are going to be going through then. I mean, because it's, yeah, it's more than just collecting food for you guys too, right? Right. Um, but, you know, it's a whole process for the girls. They have to decide how they want to um, collect food. Um, if they want to go to a businesses, they have to make that, you know, contact. And so they're getting leadership skills. They're getting people skills, all sorts of things. It's not just collecting food, although that's, you know, the main point of it is to help the food bank. Wait a minute. So the moms and dads don't write out the plan and say, okay, kids, do it? Oh, absolutely not. Everything in Girl Scouts is girl-led. The girls decide what they want to do, how they want to do it. It's, it's all up to them. How, how are things going in the, in, we are now in the 21st century, things have changed, right? Right. How about with the Girl Scouts? Well, we're trying to change with the times, you know, we keep up with what girls are interested in. Um, you know, we have a lot more science and technology programs than we used to, and just try to keep up with what girls are interested in. Well, are they doing a pretty good job of that? Yes, I love the program that they have at their offices, and they do um, different things throughout the year that it's really fun. Okay, now you're going to go to your neighborhood. Yes. So what about the viewer who doesn't have a Girl Scout living in their neighborhood? What do you what do you have to say to them? What should they do? Well, they can um, like walk around to like family neighborhoods or um, I email my family and friends and I'm leaving a box on my front porch so that they can just drop it off whenever um, whenever they're driving through my neighborhood. Okay, so in other words, I could probably do the same thing in my neighborhood and bring it by May 4th at a Walmart and not necessarily wait to just go in and buy it and bring it out. Yes. But if I forgot, <laughs> it's really easy. Mm -hmm. So what are the hours you're going to be collecting food at Walmart? From 9 a.m. to noon on May 4th. At every Walmart in every Norfolk? Every Walmart and all over Hampton Roads, yes. Well, yeah, but this is Norfolk. I know, but in Norfolk <laughs> oh, <yeah>. as well. <laughs> in, in Norfolk as well. Cool stuff. Okay, what a creative way because rather than going in and buying cookies, just drop off your food right there at Walmart to a bunch of cadets, brownies, and whole nine yards, right? Yeah, all levels of girls are going to be out there volunteering. And there's a need out there that needs to be met. Absolutely. Thanks, Lydia. And also, thanks for sharing what's going on on Tywood to Drive. Oh, absolutely. I was curious. We're excited. Cool. When we come back, we got some really cool people that are going to talk about some great art that they did, but don't tell them, okay? Stay tuned for some great stuff right here. <music> Welcome back to Norfolk Perspectives. I'm Bob Batcher. And you know what? When I heard that our post was coming on, I thought I was going to be called to action again to get out of my chair and exercise, <laughs> but maybe not. But speaking of exercise, I am going to the fitness center. Trim down a little bit. I encourage you to get fit too. But you know what? While you're getting fit, you can get creative. I got Christy Donovan, therapeutic recreation specialist. How are you doing? Good. How are you? You're going, to exp you're going to describe all this, but more importantly, we've got a special guest with us too, right? We do. Who's going to talk about this? And Kathy uh, Orletsky, how are you doing? Good. How are you? You're kind of a special guest too, although you've been here as a pro, but you've got a twin sitting next to you. <laughs> I do. Yeah. Didn't know that, did I you? I know. Um, Andrea Porter, who's the artist and the uh, therapeutic rec center participant. 
Mm -hmm. You are the star of this uh, of this time because you brought one <laughs> of your pieces That's what my here. sister said. <laughs> she calls you a star. You make her call you a star? <laughs> she calls me the star, too. All right. <laughs> she said, I'm the star of the show. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Okay, so you go to the Therapeutic Rec Center on a regular yeah. basis? Yeah. Oh, well, just about. <laughs> now, do they make you exercise, too? Yeah. <laughs> Okay, but when you're not exercising, you're making robots, right? <laughs> I don't have a whole lot. That's <laughs> my only one. That's your only robot. Yeah. But it's a special robot. Yeah. Because it's on Norfolk Perspectives. Not every robot has been on ro mm. Norfolk Perspectives. Do you have a story behind that robot? Who, you made it for somebody special, didn't you? Yep. Mary. And she's in your class? Yes. Now she, the cheap. I understand. Little bird told me. Actually, it was you in pre-tape. The the little doicky things on top of its head were made by Mary, right? Yeah, they are made by her. Yes. Now that's not just a piece of artwork. That's also a functional piece of artwork. Because it's a bank, right? Yeah. So what made you think of Mary when you made that? Well. One because her because she says her name is Robot. <laughs> the, that makes perfect sense. <laughs> okay, now do you realize you are now a world famous artist because you're on a poster too? Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to stir things up. You know, usually there's some I don't know payment that comes with being on a poster. Do they pay you guys for doing this? <laughs> nah, <laughs> no, because you're doing it out of love, aren't you? Yes. Yeah. Mm. And. and Kathy, that's what this is really all about, is the relationship with the, with the participants in the rec center, isn't it? It definitely is. It's all about just really finding that niche, whether it's a hobby, whether it's a recreational activity, something that really gives the person purpose and meaning and enhances their quality of life and really having them just dive into it full-heartedly. And we're alongside to help them and to reach all of those goals with them. Yeah, because I, I know over the years you've been on the show with some real special guests who mm -hmm. have been the real spirit and drive behind the... the Definitely. The facility. Now, I understand there's been a little bit of a development with the rec center. Yes. Yeah, sure tell has. me about it. <laughs> yes, we have added on to our little center that could is now much bigger. So we were able to add on an addition that has a computer lab. We have a new multi-purpose room area, an actual uh, assessment room, um, which can also act as a conference room, meeting room. We have a large office space, and then we have a family restroom and a pantry. So it's really added to the programming that we've cool. done out of one room for so many years. Now we have five to six rooms. Okay, so now I'm confused because that's an awesome facility, but now you're over at the Paul Street Gallery, which is mm -hmm. going to be at the Titus Town Rec Center, which is on Divin Road. Right. It wouldn't be any fun if we did everything at our building. We have yeah. to share. So we need to go out in the community. Collaborations are key to what we do. So because they are the art experts over at the Visual Arts Center, okay. they assist us in designing our poster every year, and they give us that art space in their Paul Street Art Gallery for all of our artists to display their pieces, and it gives them that art gallery experience as an artist. So, okay, so Andrea's going to have not only a robot on the poster, the world is going to come and see her robot That's at the right. Paul Street Gallery? That's Did right. Did you know that? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> She's been in the, in the art gallery and the Miracles in Art uh, art show many, many years. Oh, this, so this isn't her first piece? No. <laughs> no do you, do very you remember what the other pieces were? They're all at home. <laughs> They're all at home now. Great. Christy, these are special pieces, and one thing I've noticed, there's no ashtrays. <laughs> no, there isn't. Which means there's no failures. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> we we um, go shopping before every session to a um, ceramic store, and they're able to go ahead and pick out their own pieces for themselves and bring them back to the center, and then they get to paint them. So this is, they pick this out themselves. Okay, so you were the expert on doing this, right? <laughs> you could, I guess you could say that. Okay, so <laughs> Actually, here's... they're more the expert than me. <laughs> well, then I'll, okay, between the three of you. Okay, so if I, something tells me that when this was painted, it wasn't green. No, it was not. It was more of a whitish color. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so, not shiny. <laughs> yeah, so how do you know it's going to look like that? 
Well, sometimes it's well, trial and error. Yeah, sometimes it's trial and error. Um, we, of course, we have color charts that help them. Um, but basically, when they paint it, we don't really know until we put it in the kiln and it comes out and it's fired, and then it's just a surprise as to to what it kind of looks like. Um, especially the piece that's got the um, cupcake. She does a lot of color mixing. Yeah, thanks for bringing a cupcake on. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm <laughs> dieting, and here you bring a cupcake on. You wouldn't want to eat that cupcake. No. <laughs> but how did you? Okay, so she was able to. She added on her own um, the the dots. Some of those dots are not originally on there. She did a creative part of being able to add on along with the. Um, Can you heart. pick that up and show it to sure. the camera? Because that's not mm -hmm. getting full. Yep, there it is. Yeah, this one right here. Um, this one. This outline here is not part of the piece originally. That was something that she designed and um, painted herself. Wow. Yes. So um, we do stress a lot of being creative and, and trying their own things and, and seeing what they like. So we get a lot of creativity. Now, Andrea, I, I don't mm. consider myself very creative. Would I work out in a, in a class like this? Would they be helping me get more creative? Yes. Yeah, that's that's where they really come into play. <laughs> mm -hmm. When you first started painting, did you think you could do it? You mean the uh, the whole work? Yeah, the whole work. Well, a good bit of it. So you came in with great confidence. <laughs> did they help you build your confidence? Yes. And that's what this program is really about. It's going the next step, isn't it? It really is. It's just going that next step. And everyone that participates has different goals that they're working on. And it may be creativity. Yeah. It, it may be just to heighten um, mobility or to be able to have better balance or to be able to have better fine motor skills, which are a lot of times used in classes such as ceramics because, of course, they have paint brushes and they're doing fine detail work. So we're, we have a wonderful recreational fun environment, but everyone's working on goals and, and strengthening something. Now, is there a criteria for people for people who can be uh, participating with therapeutic? Right yes, what, there what sure are things is. You're looking for? At our center, we um, primarily focus on serving individuals that have um, varying health conditions or temporary impairments or disabilities. So there's a focus as far as the group that we're serving, and we're able to have a specialized environment with a lower staff ratio, so we can provide that assistance when it's needed. But there's many participants that have a very high level of independence in our programming, and we're just there to cheer them on. Cool. So April 25th through May 9th, come and see the robot. Yes. <laughs> and some other artwork. <laughs> We're so glad that you guys are here. So uh, did she tell, the, tell me the truth? Yeah. Yeah, she did? <laughs> Thanks for everything that you guys Thank are you. doing. Thank right there at the Therapeutic Rec Center. But over now at uh, the Paul Street Gallery, come and see the robot. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Thanks for joining us. When we come back. And the other pieces. Yeah, and the other pieces. That's right. <laughs> when we come back, we'll be talking about a special expo that you're going to want to participate in. Stay tuned. I'm home. And I love it. I'm home. I'm home. Where I belong. It's always nice to come home. But many Americans are at risk of foreclosure and losing their homes. Making Home Affordable from the U.S. government has already helped over a million struggling homeowners like these. The sooner you act, the better chance we can help you. I'm home, I'm home, where I belong. Welcome back to uh, Norfolk Perspectives. You know, one of the things we've seen throughout the whole show is you have a chance to really grow no matter how old you might be. If you're a, a Girl Scout cadet who's being homeschooled, she's got a future ahead of her, or if you're a... Uh, you know, doing art as a senior citizen, but this is an extremely important program where because you can become an apprentice, which is something that I haven't heard about in a long, long time. Sarah Parker, Assistant Director of Economic Development, how you doing? Great. Okay, so you came up with this idea about let's have an expo about apprenticeship and you brought along a special guy to tell you about it, right? <laughs> well. well, that's what you told me you were, that's a special right. guy. Uh, Dr. Uh, Larry Dolo. You got an expo, this expo coming up. So, first of all, when is the expo? It's on Thursday, May 23rd. Okay. And, Larry, what do you mean by um, apprenticeship expo? Well, it's kind of, kind of interesting. We're going to have about 70 companies there, and uh, individuals will be able to come and to talk to the companies about apprenticeship programs. Now, the apprenticeship concept is a very interesting concept. Starting in the United States about 1936, with a law passed by Congress, every state has an apprenticeship program, including Virginia. I always started very early. 
And what it is is that you get formal training with a company, about 2,000 hours of training. You get some classroom uh, training. So you establish a relationship with a company which leads to permanent employment in usually high paying positions. Wow, so, it, so it's kind of on the job training, but mm -hmm. more than that. Yeah, it's more than on job training, but that's what it is. And it's the old concept of vocational education that was big many years ago, mm -hmm. sort of disappeared for a while in the United States, and it's coming back now. And it's a great opportunity for individuals to participate in post-secondary education at the same time get an employment. Okay, Larry, I'm going to take a chance here because since you were the consortium for higher education, mm -hmm. don't you want people to get that four-year degree, wrap up a lot of great debt, and go into the <laughs> professions? Right, I declined to answer that question. <laughs> <laughs> no, in, in reality, this is, this is an avenue to post-secondary education because most of the training will take place in the community college, and studies will show that once a person gets a job, gets that training with a community college, chances are they will go on for further education. So it's a win-win situation for everyone. So okay. those students will eventually become four-year students and go on to get bachelor's or master's degree, and that's sort of been the history. Now, Sarah, you and I have had the opportunity to work together for a long, long time. Yep. If you had a chance to go to do it again and go to an apprentice school, what would you do? What skill would you want to do? Oh, develop? I'd love to be an iron worker. <laughs> oh, because you could wear a hat. Yeah. No, because I could throw an anv anvil, <laughs> anvil at you. <laughs> oh, there we go. But, no. but why is this important to the city? Oh, it's very important because we're, we're uh, really committed to, for one, with our priorities for economic vitality mm -hmm. and lifelong learning. And this is, this, that is exactly it, what it is. It kind of falls right into and it. And it puts Norfolk residents to work, gives them, some, gives them the training that they need. And um, most, most of the employers require a minimum of a, of a GED. Mm -hmm. But if you're, you know, lacking some uh, training, formal education, a lot of, you know, here, here's your route. Well, and I think it. a lot of times, I, when I, again, that bias mm -hmm. that I have, especially in our area, when I think of apprenticeship, I think obviously of the shipbuilding. That, that's part of yeah. their one. Yeah. Well, mm -hmm. But then also, like we just had the big expansion with uh, Bauer, who, who actually is expanding in the neighborhood. So it's mm -hmm. on the bus route. It's, mm -hmm. it's, mm -hmm. it's available employment that you can get to. It's accessible. You don't have to necessarily be going to Newport News. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah, but these companies, they're, they're participating, all they're from all over. Okay. So it's not only the city of Norfolk, it's Newport News, Chesapeake, Portsmouth. And so what we're trying to do is to let people know what's available in the area and to give them some opportunity. Now, you mentioned 70 businesses? 70 businesses okay, will be start, there. Okay, start naming, Larry. No, no, no. no, no. <laughs> well, maybe maybe it would be helpful if we tell them what the industries are. Okay, that'd like be cool. Shipbuilding, manufacturing, construction and skilled trades, and services. So that's every, the services mm. cover everything from opticians to um, FedEx. Mm -hmm. I think they're in there. Those types of jobs. Navy Exchange. Navy I mean, Exchange. A, lot, yes, a lot of those oh. have apprenticeship programs. People don't know. Really? I was actually, I'll be honest with you, before we did this last year, I had no idea about apprenticeship programs. I learned a great deal and I'm very impressive. Some of these companies spend a lot of money getting these people and trying to get them into their positions. Anywhere from, you know, you get air conditioning, electron, electronics, uh, all those kinds of things. They're looking for people to train them, 2,000 hours of training, and then, you know, they continue with a, a good paying position. Okay, now let's talk to the viewer about uh, getting ready for the uh, Scope Your Future on May 23rd. It's going to be from 4 to 8 mm -hmm. at Scope. Right. Mm -hmm. Wait a minute. Is it? <laughs> yeah. Hence, yeah, it took us a lot of time to figure out that little slogan. <laughs> I finally got it all figured out. Yeah, so right. scope your future at scope. scope. Right. You get into an apprenticeship program, you can in invest in your future. That's mm -hmm. exactly right. Exactly. Got it. Okay, and now, what the should the person who wants to come do to get ready to come? Well, they should dress professionally when they, when they arrive, and uh, they need to bring their resumes. Mm -hmm. They can pre-register, although it's not required, but if you do go on the website, which you can go to norfolk.gov and c click on the Scope Your Future logo, if they go there and pre-register, then we'll send them some information and tips and different things like that, and we'll have them in our database because we are very serious about reaching out to these individuals that want to learn about uh, skill building and things like that, and, and possibly jobs. Yeah. That are and, out there. and the great thing about it is that Scope, the way it's set up, you can just walk around the circular part of it. There'll be companies, you can take your time and talk into all the companies, bring your resume. Uh, last time we had some people actually right on the spot. Cool. Uh, but this it may or may not happen this time, I don't know. But it, you know, all, these companies are looking 
for well-educated, trained people. Well, and I understand that is an issue when you get into the, especially with the trades. Yeah. It's finding somebody who is either equipped to do it, right, or who is wanting to do it. Now, what about that viewer who's sitting at home saying, yeah, "I'm making eight twenty-five bucks an hour. You know, the hours aren't too bad. They don't make me do too much." Is that somebody who might want to re Well, yeah, you might want to reconsider because these are really long-term ter positions you get with mm -hmm. a company, very high-paying positions and once you get in with a company. And it's the company wants good employees, and they want a long-term relationship. So that's why they're in this apprenticeship uh, program. Now, one thing I was going to mention to Sarah, but I won't because, you know, the cameras are on, mm -hmm. but we both have kids about the same age who have kind of gone through the ropes. Mm -hmm. And some are saying, okay, I, you know, I'm making good money as a server, uh, you know, got mm -hmm. some cash in my pocket. That's not really enough for job security. No, you know, you got to look long term. What are you going to be doing in 10, 15 years? And if you have mathematical skills especially, and, uh, you know, we're getting into really advanced uh, technology now, so they're looking for people with good experience who are able to, uh, to do these kinds of positions, you can do very well for yourself. You know, you go to Europe, these positions pay very highly, and they they really s seek out people mm -hmm. who can have these mechanical kinds of skills. They're yeah, transferable everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. Throughout yeah. the world. I, in fact, I could use a couple of skilled people at my home yeah. as we speak. <laughs> <'Cause laughs> I'm sure not right. skilled. Yeah, that's well, right. you look at the skilled uh, trades too. Things that technology has has really changed everything mm -hmm. and. You know, these these people really need to um, be updated on the technologies mm -hmm. that are in. And you, and you look at the shipbuilding industry and what the average age is, 55. Mm -hmm. So they're going to be you're gonna be They're going to be right leaving. They're they're gonna they be can't even leave yeah. because there's yeah. not folks to come yeah, and in then behind Yeah, you know, them. it's not only that. It's plumbing. It's electricians. I mean, you, we need good, well-trained uh, people, and that's what these companies are looking for. Okay, but here, I'm going to throw it at you, yeah. though. I mean, with the whole, I'd say the word, but I can never pronounce it correctly. The world is coming to an end because the military is moving out, and there that's are no jobs. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's what the cynics are saying. Mm -hmm. You don't agree with no, it? No, I don't agree with it because I think the economy will shift, and the global economy will be in light manufacturing probably for us. You know, Megatronics, which mm -hmm. is really computer advanced manufacturing, that's beginning to catch on. Some of our schools have programs in that now. So I think they're looking down the road. And, of course, Virginia is very interested, and the governor is very interested in, in bringing in high-skilled kinds of positions. So, so if you want to be at the open door and be at the leading edge of it, show up at Scope on May 23rd. Go to the website. Register if you can. Yeah, if but if like you haven't, it. show up professional show up. dress. Thanks exactly. for everything that you guys are doing to bring a new message and investing in the future here in, in Norfolk. Appreciate it. We'd love to hear from you what you'd like to see on TV48, but more importantly, what's going on in your neighborhood? Give us a holler at 664-6510. And as usual, it's a wonderful time to be in Norfolk just because of you and you.